Mary Lou Bongiorno. My husband Jerome and I have been documenting our home city of Newark, New Jersey for many years. Our Three R's trilogy began with Revolution 67. Its sequel was The Rule. And this film is Rust, which tackles solutions to reduce poverty and racism. We need the president, we need Congress to create a national jobs program to put the unemployed back to work now. You just watched a clip from a compelling documentary called Rust. The uh, documentary filmmakers are with us today right now. You got uh, Mary Lou and Jerome Bongiorno, filmmakers at Bongiorno Productions. Good to see you, my friends. Great to see you, Steve. Uh, by the way, I want to make it clear, there are two other documentaries that we have featured. Revolution 67, about the uh, riots, if you will, the revolt in Newark in 1967, and also The Rule from 2014 on St. Benedict's Prep and the extraordinary story there. So, Rust, the, we saw the video, the premise using Newark as a microcosm of what issue, Mary Lou? Our log line uh, for Rust is how to break the chains of poverty in U.S. inner cities. And obviously, as you said, we've, we're focusing on our home city of Newark. So we made the film for viewers to understand that poverty and racism in Rust Belt cities our major problems, and to think differently about our home city of Newark. Jerome, how did you select, because I saw Ryan Haygood and some of our other friends there, how did you select the people you spoke to for this documentary? Uh, we just tried to get the best people who knew what they were talking about as far as history of Newark was concerned, as far as history of the United States is concerned, racism, slavery, activism. Uh, you know, we just took the best of the best. And by the way, the documentary is premiering on PBS on May 18th. And Mary Lou, it's got some other premieres coming up as well. Yes. Um, so on May 18th, national PBS, as you mentioned, uh, check local listings because that'll be over a period of time. Um, we also have the virtual premiere hosted by Prudential Financial, and that's on May 3rd. And it's a powerhouse panel discussion that evening with uh, Dr. Khalil Muhammad, Dr. Um, Joynton Barrett, and uh, Larry Hamm. So uh, come to our website, bonjournalproductions.com, and, and sign in and, and get to see the film early. By the way, we'll put up that website as we do the program. What is the most significant message? And I'm sure, you know, with your documentaries so powerful, so compelling, so moving, people take different things away from them. But particularly at this very difficult time in our nation, as polarized and divided as we are with the racial tension slash polarization. Mary Lou, what would you say the most significant message you'd like people to take away? Well, our message in all these films is, is very simple. It's to reduce poverty. So once you reduce poverty, the crime goes down, graduation rates go up. And our takeaway, um, we want people to take away from this film is that it's not hard to reduce poverty. This is a solutions-based film. So poverty reduction has been done and it can be done um, by government with political will. And Jerome, maybe you want to give your take on that. Yeah, we and have by the way, as you're, as you're Jerome, as you're talking about this, our team's going to put up our graphic of our ongoing series called Confronting Racism. And we're going to ask people to go on our website and look at previous interviews, including with Ryan Haygood, who is in your documentary. But pick up your point, Jerome. Yeah, we have a high poverty rate in Newark. You know, it's near 30 percent. And, uh, you know, we live in Newark, so we see and we've been here a long time. So we see this poverty, you know, every day in our neighborhood. And I think the big takeaway from Russ is that after people see the film, they'll understand that our government has had major success with reducing poverty in the past. And the other takeaway uh, from the film is that, you know, the four points that we give in the film is how to reduce poverty. Number one, you know, jobs. You got people have to be employed. The second thing is you got to improve the educational system. And actually, we had featured uh, St. Benedict's Prep in our previous film called The Rule. And we actually took up an alumnus from that uh, time who had a troubled past. You know, he was going to drop out. But because he received counseling while he was at Benedict's, 10 years later, we're following him mm -hmm. today. Now he's a college graduate and he's a social worker. So he got his life back on track. He's a success all because the school gave him what he needed. And that, so that's the second point. The third point uh, to reduce poverty is we got to create programs to help families to stay intact. And the fourth point to reduce poverty, the final one, which actually maybe should be number one, is to create programs to reduce racism. So uh, reduce racism. What do you say to those, 
Mary Lou, who are sitting there going, yeah, this sounds interesting, but this whole structural racism thing, institutional racism, uh, I'm not convinced it's as serious a problem as most of us realize it is. What would you say to those folks? Because yeah. Mary Lou, with all due respect, you and I grew up in the same neighborhood. Many of the people we grew up with and around who don't, quote, live in the neighborhood any longer don't buy the structural racism argument. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Absolutely, I do. And that's why we made this film. So the first thing, uh, Steve, in terms of confronting racism is we have to admit that it exists. And that's why we set about systematically showing uh, in this film proof of that. And not only that it exists, but how it severely impacts people's lives. So when we say that, it's not just um, some minor you know, uh, anger or embarrassment or people get sad and because they experience this, I mean, they have fear. And this is every day of their lives to the point where it destroys their health, it destroys the cohesiveness of their families, their living conditions, and, and even their freedom. So if you don't have freedom, and, and that's really what we're saying, right? If you don't have freedom, then um, how are you supposed to function? So Russ then details very specifically, the rise of, of racism in America from when we were English colonies, the progress through US slavery, and mm. then the post-slavery black codes all the way up to mass incarceration today. So a major goal for us, for us was to increase the viewer's consciousness of racism and to understand what it means. Hey, real quick, in the time we have left, Jerome, to what degree do you deal with COVID and the disparity in terms of how COVID has impacted uh, communities of color in addition to the vaccine, because you're doing this in real time, but you have a historical perspective, We've got a few seconds left. But COVID is part of the discussion about racism, is it not? Oh, definitely. Well, you know, in uh, communities that suffer racism, you know, COVID, you're gonna see COVID in higher concentrations. And then uh, when people see Rust, they'll be re more receptive to our message because it'll be easier to see how government can mobilize to redirect industry, keep businesses running, provide relief for unemployment, prevent evictions, food insecurity, revamp healthcare, and allocate more fund funding for gaps in education. So we're seeing this happen because the government is taking action. So if the mm. government can take action for COVID, why can't it take action for, the, for racism? And the answer is it can, if it wants to. It's a question of will and commitment and understanding that it's not going away and just because people would like it to. And so to, to you, Mary Lou, and to Jerome Marjorno, the filmmakers at Marjorno Productions, this um, documentary May 18th on PBS, you catch it later. We'll also provide a link on our website at the appropriate time after it airs on PBS. Uh, to say that we are proud of you and what you've done, particularly being Newarkers and Mary Lou with us, and I've said this many times, growing up in our, the neighborhood on Tiffany Boulevard, Sounds like a cliche, but I know you'll appreciate this. You make the neighborhood proud. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for all you do, Steve, and for having us. This is the third film. Thank you for all the coverage. We appreciate We're it. We're here. We're not going anywhere. Thanks <laughs> so much. Uh, this is uh, Steve Adubato. We thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.